Hello and welcome to another one of Mr. Deep in Science lessons. For today's session you're going to need a book and a pen and in your book I'd like to get down today's title which is Charles Darwin. For your starter activity I would like you to describe the differences between these four different finches. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time pause the video and when you're finished we'll go through the answers together. Have you got some differences? Other than the obvious differences in the colour of these birds, another large difference lies in the shape of the beak. Finches 1 and 2 had much larger beaks with much less of a point. This implies that these birds were better at cracking nuts than they were for hunting for bugs and grubs. Whereas finches 3 and 4 had much pointier beaks. This implies that they were better at eating and digging for grubs and bugs and didn't have a diet which consisted of many large nuts. In today's lesson we're going to be describing how Darwin came up with his theory of natural selection. We are also going to explain what a peer review is and why Darwin's theory was so controversial at the time. We're also going to explain the evidence that supported Darwin's theory. So let's look at Charles Darwin. In 1831 he went on an expedition on the HMS Beagle and he went to the Galapagos Islands, which is part of the Republic of Ecuador. And on his journey, he was reading The Principles of Geology by Liel. And this book claimed that fossils were the remains of animals that lived millions of years ago. And this idea was something that was accepted by most scientists. Now, when Darwin got to the Galapagos Islands, he discovered that each island had its own distinct species of finch and that each bird had a beak adapted for eating the food that grew on the island it lived in. So our birds with the bigger beaks lived on islands which contained lots of fruits and nuts, whereas our birds with the smaller pointier beaks lived on islands where there were more bugs and grubs to eat. And with that in mind, before we move on, I would like you to suggest what each of these four birds eat. So we've got the large ground finch, the medium ground finch, the small tree finch and the green warbler finch. I want you to look at their beaks, and I want you to look at all the different food sources below, and I want you to try and match up the food to the correct bird. And there's a bit of a hint, each of these birds eats more than one of these food sources, and none of these birds eats more than four. I'm gonna put five seconds on the clock, and if you need more time, pause the video, and when you're finished, we'll go through the answers together. So let's have a look at what each of these birds eats, starting with the large ground finch. It's going to eat seeds because its beak is big enough to crack open the shell. It's going to eat whole flowers off of the cactus and it's going to eat the larger insects. Our medium ground finch also has a very large beak and is going to be able to crack open the shells of those seeds. And it's not a big enough bird to eat the cactus flowers like the large ground finch, but it will eat the young leaves and it will eat the buds before they bloom, as well as some smaller flowers. With our small tree finch, you can see we're moving on to a much smaller, pointier beak. This implies it's going to be eating more insects like the caterpillar, the grubs, and all manner of small insects. But you can still see some of the similarities in the shape of the beak between the small tree finch and the ground finches. And the small tree finch will also eat the buds on plants. Our green warbler finch has the pointiest of all the beaks and its diet is going to consist of small insects and grubs and nothing else. Its beak is not suited for eating any plants, nuts or seeds. And using this observation, Darwin concluded that the bird with the best beak suited to the food on the island would be more likely to survive. And if it's more likely to survive, it's more likely to reproduce. So those characteristics of the most successful bird will be transferred to their offspring. And over many generations, this would continue until all the finch on the island had the same adaptations. And this is how Darwin came up with his theory of natural selection. But Darwin had to get his work checked by something else in a process called peer review. And this brings Alfred Wallace into the story. Because Alfred Wallace had also started to develop his own theory of natural selection in evolution. And so Alfred Wallace and Charles Darwin exchanged their ideas and their theories were actually very similar. 
and this checking of each other's work by other scientists is known as peer review. And if you have your work peer reviewed, it adds additional validity to your work. People are more likely to believe it if both you and another expert both agree on what is written. But before we move on, I want to have a quick recap, starting with describing the process of natural selection for four marks. This is something that we covered in our last lesson. I want to know what species Darwin studied on the Galapagos Islands, and I want to know what is meant by peer review for two marks. And if you really want a challenge, I'd also like you to suggest if the medium ground finch and the small tree finch could live on the same island. And I would like you to explain your answer. To do the challenge activity, you're going to need to look at the previous task and have a look at the different foods that each bird eats. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time, pause the video and when you're finished, we'll go through the answers together. Have you got some answers? Let's describe the process of natural selection. We know that there is lots of variation within a species. That means that animals with the best characteristics or genes are more likely to survive. And if they are more likely to survive, they are more likely to reproduce. This means that those characteristics, those genes, are going to be passed on to the next generation. The species that Darwin studied on the Galapagos Islands were the finches. And this peer review is when a scientist checks the work of another scientist to add validity to the work. Nowadays, when scientific journals get published, they often go to three peer reviews. And if one of the peer reviewers disagrees with what you've written, then your work doesn't get published. Did you suggest if the ground finch and the tree finch could live on the same island? If you did, I'd like to hear about it down in the comments below. But Darwin and Wallace's theory did cause a bit of controversy. In 1859, Darwin published On the Origin of Species, which outlined his theories of natural selection and evolution. But this work went against the teachings of the Bible, which states that God created all the life on earth. And so this theory was rejected for quite a long time because Darwin's theory suggested that we have evolved from apes. But now we can explain what peer review is and we can explain why Darwin's theory was so controversial. Next, we're going to describe some of the evidence that supported Darwin's theory, such as the fossil record, which shows all the living creatures that lived in a place over a really long period of time. And over the hundreds and thousands of years of fossils which have been deposited in the earth, you can see the gradual change in the species and the animals that lived in that habitat. And because of this, it allows us to track how the modern species evolved from ancestor species. But there was more evidence which supported Darwin's theory of natural selection, such as animals becoming extinct. So those species which didn't have the best characteristics to survive in their habitat eventually died out. And since the publication of his work, there has been lots of documented cases of evolution, especially in terms of bacteria becoming resistant to antibiotics as well as in other organisms which have very small lifespans, such as the fruit fly. So what I would like to do next is to describe the differences between Hierarchotherium at the bottom of this fossil chart and our modern horse at the top of this fossil chart. And if you really want a challenge, you can use this information to suggest why these differences are more advantageous in the modern horse. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time, pause the video and when you're finished, we'll go through the answers together. So let's have a look at some of these differences. Our modern horse is taller. Our modern horse has a longer foreleg. Our modern horse has longer teeth. And our modern horse has hooves. On our hierarchotherium, at the bottom of its legs, you can see something that resembles a foot. And as you move up the fossil record, this becomes more tightly closed to form a hoof. But why are these characteristics more suited to their environment? Its longer foreleg allows it to run faster. Its bigger teeth imply that there would be a change in their diet, and the development of hooves show that it would need increased traction. So in the time of Hierarchotherium, the ground could have been very dry and very arid. Whereas over the hundreds of thousands of years it took for this horse to evolve, the land could have became a lot wetter, and so better traction would have been required. So now we can describe some of the evidence which supports Darwin's theory. 
which means there's only one more thing I'd like us to do, which is our plenary. And birds evolved from dinosaurs. I would like you to suggest how the characteristics of a chicken are more beneficial than that of a T-Rex. But with that in mind, this concludes everything that you need to know about Charles Darwin. I hope you've had a great lesson, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the lesson. If you found it useful, don't forget to press the like button. And why don't you subscribe and press the bell icon as well so you know when the next lesson's available. You can also support me on Patreon and you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And I appreciate all the support. And I'll see you next time.